Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the no BS blockchain built with the community for the community. And tonight we have another very exciting guest, one of the masterminds in the crypto space, our dear friend Pavel, the CEO of Wirex. Thank you so much for coming tonight. It's great to be here. It's great to have you, my friend. So uh, first things first, you have a crazy story, something really interesting that Obviously, you're the CEO of a very big company and a lot of many people look up to you. Do you mind sharing a little bit of your story and the background? Sure. So we established a company in 2014. Before I talked to Wirex, I spent my uh, almost entire career in investment banks here in London. So I was working in Morgan Stanley, Barclays Capital, Credit Suisse and a couple of more investment banks. At some point, I realized, OK, I've probably done a lot of stuff in investment banks and I was feel bored and I was looking for a new challenge. And it's uh, the time when I started reading about blockchain and Bitcoin. So Bitcoin back in the days, in the time was for geeks only. You need to install a lot of wallets. You need to understand how it works. You need to test if the wallet, wallet actually works. Yeah. So completely for geeks. And it's uh, the time when we uh, started thinking, okay, Bitcoin and blockchain itself is a great technology, but how can we make it simple? How can we make it you know, more user-friendly? How the general crowd can use it in everyday life? And it's how we came up with the idea of uh, our uh, first product is a Bitcoin debit card. So we incorporated the company in 2014 and in February 15, we launched our first uh, Bitcoin debit card. And it was quite exciting time for us. We actually spent a lot of time on forums uh, uh, trying to explain people that this is real, uh, not a scam, because it's still kind of happening in the industry, but people are trying to accuse you in scam at any possible, uh, at any possibility, right? But back in the days, it was much more difficult. But it's how we started and uh, we started growing our client base and we uh, started expanding to new countries, new regions, and it's where we are right now. It must have been such a struggle because easy, even as of today, when I ask people about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, they're like, oh, I don't, t I don't trust digital assets. But I then ask them, well, do you trust your credit card? <laughs> because they, they still believe physical you know money is, is the way to go and they don't really see how this works. Uh, it must have been really tough, no, trying to get people to understand that. It is, but the, the reason, one of the reasons why we have chosen a Bitcoin debit card is because we were actually thinking about exactly the same. So the new thing, right, Bitcoin, why people want to trust, why people have to trust, how people can trust the new thing, Bitcoin, which they can't, they, they can't feel, they can't put in, in the pocket. And we were thinking, okay, the card actually has all these, you know, things, features, right? So the card, first of all, everybody, every one of us have card, more than one card. So it's kind of part of our everyday life. And another thing is card is usually associated with, with banks. It's actually, in fact, it's it not necessarily banks who issue the card, but a people, general crowd has this kind of, you know, association. And banks are usually, you know, people trust banks historically with the money. So we, we thought, okay, we need to combine these two things together. Uh, so it will be more trust for digital asset. People can feel it, can put it in the pocket and can use it in everyday life. So this was the idea. Oh, so you're making it uh, easier to trust because it's not too far different from a normal credit card. But I think the, the, trust, the, the trust is very important for adoption. Yes. So if you especially when we're talking about you know finance or, or money in in order to use a product people have to trust need to be sure that the money is secure and you know they need to have this kind of physical you know that uh, it's my card it's my pocket even if uh, bitcoin is in the wallet in application somewhere or in you know hard wallet or somewhere else but they need to have this feeling so and we were thinking, okay, once we have a trust, it will help us with adoption. And with, you know, with adoption, it will be, you know, bigger client base as well. Yeah, I, I definitely want to ask you some questions related to adoption because you're definitely one of the people pushing a mass adoption at this point. But have you ever purchased a pizza with Bitcoin? <laughs> well, I, 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 
I bought a lot of pizzas with uh, Varex Visa card, which allow you to use your digital asset, right? So does it count as a... That counts, yeah, okay. why not? Okay, that great. counts. So it's doable as of today. Someone can purchase a pizza with a card as of today. Yeah, they can. It's, it's quite funny, actually. Uh, do, do you know, can you guess what's kind of the, the most popular merchant uh, among our client base? Just a blind guess. What the do you most think? popular merchant. Uh, fashion? Clothes? No, it's McDonald's. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah, so McDonald's is the most popular uh, merchant among Quarex client base. So people are using their Bitcoin to buy a Big Mac or and fries and... Fries, Big Mac, whatever <laughs> you want, yeah. There is a veggie Big Mac in, in McDonald's nowadays, so... That's really cool. So for those who dream to be able to purchase a pizza with Bitcoin, they can actually do it with the Wirex card. A lot of people do, yes. They do that. That is very, very cool. So uh, I have another question, so related to mass adoption. But before I jump into that, um, I would love to hear a little bit more about your story becoming a CEO. Nowadays, you know, on LinkedIn, everyone has CEO, founder, co-founder. Uh, but it's a very difficult job. It's a very stressful job. There are pros and cons to it. Uh, how was your experience going from the normal Pavel that knows his family as a normal guy to the CEO of, of a major company like Wirex? Well, being CEO or having your own business, it's not for everybody. I think the, the, the most important thing, you need to, to love what you're doing. You need to believe in what you're doing. If you don't have it, you, you, you won't succeed. Because there are, you know, it's a startup, especially at the early stage and up, it's ups and downs. You know, you might be the, the most, you know, the happiest person in the world one day and something happens the second day. So without belief, without loving your, your product, it, it, it's going to be very difficult. Um, I think with the time, because it, it's constant up and downs. So it, in startup, it can't be just everything positive. It, 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 it just don't happen. And uh, the thing I mentioned before, you need to to believe and you need to really love what you're doing this is the key and because after a certain period of this ups and downs you you started getting the hard skin so when you uh, get another down moment you you're thinking okay it's all right i've been there before i've done this i, I just need to keep going so that resilience helped you. Once yes. that skin became a bit hard, yeah. it's okay. I've faced this before. I'll go yeah. through this. And uh, it's uh, it's one thing. So CEO is you know the motivation of CEO is very important. But uh, you need to motivate team as well, especially when you see uh, new members join the team. So we currently around three hundred people in a company. So there are a lot of new people. And because of these ups and downs, this. For, for some people, it's quite challenging when they see kind of, you know, down moment, they think, okay, this is bad. This is what we're going to do. So that's why it's very important for them to, to explain that, look, we've been in much worse situation. Everything's going to be all right. And, you know, the motivation of a team and the culture in the, in the, in the company is very important as well. So the thing about Varex is actually, I'm CEO of Varex, but we have another CEO, so we actually have two CEO of Varex. So I'm co-CEO and my business partner, uh, whose name is Dmitry, he is co-CEO of Varex. So in terms of kind of workload, it's a bit easier for us because, you know, it's two of us. And it's quite interesting because it, it doesn't work for every startup, two people, you know, uh, doing the same job. But the reason why it works for us because we have different expertise. So I'm more kind of, you know, you know, geeky guy in, 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 in the company. Um, I look after IT and the product, and my business partner, um, he looks after finance, accounting, all the boring stuff. But because we have different <laughs> expertise, we're actually not, you know, arguing with each other, but we more complement each other. And we have this kind of 360 view on everything what's going on inside the company. And you have a clear decision-making strategy depending on if it's tech or if it's more That's accounting correct, yeah. or finance That's related. Correct. That's very cool. Because I always wonder, like two CEOs, how do you make a decision? But if you have those kind of like silos. Yes. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. Very, very cool. Cryptocurrency, in that word, it has the word currency. Do you believe that 
Bitcoin is a true currency as of today or are we still lagging a bit? What is your definition? Some people say, hey, we have already bought pizzas as we were talking about before. So yes, it is true money. It's uh, borderless money. Would you agree with that? Or how do you see it as of today? Have you seen X-Files? Yes, of course. You know, there is a popular <laughs> phrase in the X-Files, I want to believe. So uh, I want to believe that Bitcoin will be used as a currency, as a payment method at some point. Uh, right now, it's more digital gold or alternative investment instrument. But I do believe, uh, and it is a kind of part of our vision in Varex, digital assets, Bitcoin, no Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies, stable coins or something else, will be used as a main currency, as a main payment method in the future. Oh, so you have both a foot here in Europe, you, you also working in Japan. Do you see any, in terms of this adoption of accepting Bitcoin, do you see any differences in terms of the rate of adoption within Europe and Japan or similar? Um, I think different countries, they, they have kind of different approach. Uh, Japan, obviously, one of the, probably the first uh, country which decided to regulate cryptocurrency. So the reason why uh, Japan started regulating cryptocurrency because they uh, tried to protect consumers. Obviously, anti-gox uh, uh, issue happened in Japan. So then local regulator FSA decided, okay, we want we, we we believe in the cryptocurrency or in Bitcoin, right? But we need to protect consumers, and that's how we came up with the idea of uh, creating virtual currency licenses. So, from kind of uh, regulatory point of view, Japan probably is more friendly. Uh, at the same time, in Europe, the, the level of adoption or the you know the level of uh, the, the number of people who knows about Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. Are quite high as well, so I I wouldn't say it's 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 high in Asia. It's you know it's low in Europe. I think it's it the same in in different countries. In different countries, yeah, it depends on the angle that you exactly. look at it. Yeah, that's a really good point. A lot of the tier one media tend to portray Japan as the crypto friendly space or the country of the world. And you've actually had the experience, right? Going to that's, Big that's Camera, right. which uh, for those who don't know, it's one of the biggest electronic store chains in Japan. How was your experience trying to use Bitcoin at the department store? Well, um, it's, it's an interesting story. So as I mentioned, I'm, I'm kind of a big believer that Bitcoin will be a payment method, right? Will be a currency. Um, so my experience was in December 2017. So when Bitcoin price was about 20K, everybody was happy and saying, hey, to the moon, right? So, um, and uh, I was in Tokyo and uh, I went to Big Camera. So Big Camera is one of the biggest uh, uh, retail stores in, in Japan, right? Where you can buy electronics, gadgets, uh, and other stuff as well. So I was very excited. Uh, I took a flash drive and I was kind of, okay, I want to buy it with Bitcoin. So I took a flash drive, the cost was around $20. I went to the teal and I was, okay, I'm ready to pay. Because of the, obviously the, the price of Bitcoin, the transactional fees was quite high. So long story short, I ended up uh, paying $20 for flash drive and $40 in transaction fees to make a Bitcoin transaction. Uh, it's not the end of a story. So then, I had to wait 10 minutes for confirmation. And I was, it's a, it was a bit embarrassing. I was kind of, you know, looking, okay, is, is it confirmed yet? Is it confirmed yet? Um, the confirmation actually didn't come through. For some reason, I don't know, the blockchain was congested by a lot of transactions or any other reason. But um, uh, I decided, okay, I, it, it, I think it became too embarrassing. I, I used my my uh, Visa card and I paid with the card. Oh no, that's so sad. <laughs> so at that point, is that where everything started becoming real to you? Like, oh my God, we're doing something that is becoming tangible. I see the 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 end goal. Is is that where kind of you had like some sort of trigger or? or click? Um, I, I think the the 
we, we had this point, but it was slightly earlier. It was when people actually received our cards and they were, everybody was skeptical. Uh, you won't kind of read it. People were saying, it can't be true. You, you, no, it's impossible. But when people started using our cards and they had this kind of wow effect when they were converting the Bitcoin to the fiat currency on the card, the product was very simple, but it was a key. The product was easy and simple. It was one function, convert to Bitcoin to money on the card and use it. And when we started receiving this feedback and we were like, wow, we doing something real. We, we doing something what people love. Um, in, in, uh, yeah, I think this was the moment. That's amazing. That's a great, great story and hopefully will inspire many people watching out there. In terms of the payments, I was wondering, do people need to be educated to want to, for example, get a terminal for the payments? Should it be through a card? They don't need to know that people are paying through Bitcoin. What do you think is the ideal scenario moving forward? Um, I think educational piece is very important, but I don't think uh, people have to be educated about cryptocurrencies in particular, about the, the technology behind it. Uh, the people, there are new generation, right? It's called digital next. So these people actually uh, have a lot of problems with budgeting their money. So I do believe there should be educational about payments, digital payments, how properly manage your money. Right, because it's quite easy to go to Amazon and just click, click, buy, 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 and then you got a bill from your credit and debit card, right? So this is actually the real problem right now. And a lot of players in fintech space are focusing on kind of budgeting. But in terms of the payment, in order to get a mass adoption, the payment should be uh, seamless. Mm. So people don't really need to, to care, am I using Bitcoin, am I using uh, Japanese yen? Is it right terminal? Is it wrong terminal? Right, so the experience should be seamless. seamless. Yeah, so if, if it's easy, people will use it. If it's convenient, people will use it. If it's not convenient, we, we won't reach mass adoption. And that's a good point. So seamless experience without them necessarily understanding the technology behind Bitcoin and all that stuff. Well, they don't need to understand, don't right? And to. people, most of the people don't really care about technology, right? So all they need to do is buy things. Uh, send money to their friends and family, split bill in the restaurant, this sort of things. Pavel, you're a visionary. How far are we from that ideal future of people just going anywhere and using your Wirex card and, and buying anything directly in Bitcoin without people having? Well, this is a good question. Um, uh, I want to see Bitcoin uh, used as a currency, as a payment instrument uh, at some point in the future. Uh, I do believe there is some challenges for Bitcoin particularly to be used as a currency. But uh, I think we are very close to using digital assets and specifically stable coins as a, as a way to pay for things. Um, and I can explain this point a bit. So. Um, we have a banking infrastructure, right? And the banks uh, play a very vital role. They kind of element of trust. So people historically trust banks with the money. But there is no reason why banks have to do payments, right? The SWIFT infrastructure is outdated. You know, my Amazon Prime parcel arrives sooner than my SWIFT payment. It, it, it's, it's ridiculous. It's expensive, it's slow, it's not working uh, on bank holidays, outside of working hours and so on and so forth. So there is a need for better solution for digital payments. So that's why I believe while bank can still play this you know, trust role because you know, it, it will be very difficult to, to change the people perception. It will change with the time, but it will take some time. But the payments themselves can be done via tokenized fiat currency, for example, in terms of stable coins. And it can be a first step towards us using Bitcoin as a global currency of the internet in the future. That's a really good point. And speaking of which, uh, you've just announced that you will have 26 stable coins. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, we announced, uh, we were doing our stable coins with partnership with Stella. 
Uh, we have chosen Stella because of uh, scalability and we personally we have very good relation, personal relationship with Stella as well, but it uh, has everything we need for our stable coins. So our stable coins are slightly, not slightly, very different from uh, our stable coins on the market. Our stable coins on the market are mainly focusing on hedging use case, hedging on digital exchanges. What we're focusing on is a payment use case. So it's where we have multiple currencies. When, I, when I'm talking about payment use case, it's cross-border international payments, it's uh, everyday purchases in the shop, because if, if you do it in stable coins or it kind of P2P payments, it's actually beneficial not just for you, but for merchants as well. They can say three, 5%. And I'm a big believer that digital assets, stable coins and not stable coins will be used for machine to machine payments. We're actually going to the era of connected devices. By 2020, will be 25 billion of connected devices. So connected devices, smartphones, smart TV, uh, whatever smart, smart parking meter, whatever. So everybody understand, okay, all these devices, they need to do micro transactions, micro payments at some, to some points. And it's impossible to do this micro payments with traditional banking instruments. But it is possible with digital assets. That is a really cool part. So do you kind of see stable coins as a stepping stone to when Bitcoin will become or hopefully become a global borderless payment? Method? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So I, I do believe a stable coins is a small step towards broader adoption of cryptocurrencies. But stable coins, I'm talking about fiat backed stable coins, have uh, a few advantages. So first of all, from a uh, regulation point of view, you, you, they actually falls into existing regulation, e-money regulation, or in Japan, for example, if you issue a uh, fiat backed stable coin, uh, you don't need to get virtual currency license. So this is advantage. And another thing, you don't need to have a local liquidity provider to convert your Bitcoin XRP to a local currency, right? Because it's fiat backed stable coin, right? One JPY, tokenized JPY equals to one, you know, real JPY. So this is a bit easier, but I do believe at some point we will have this, you know, the internet currency and it can be Bitcoin once we solve the, all the scalability issue and maybe once Lightning Network is uh, developed enough. That's a brilliant idea. It makes a lot of sense because people are always afraid of the unfamiliar, right? So Bitcoin is a bit unfamiliar, it's a bit risky, but what you've created is close to what they're used to, a little more advanced, perhaps in terms of payment methods, hoping that, you know, they will eventually adopt, you know, what your main mission was to. I, I, I can explain our approach. So we have a vision, right? So all the payments will be digital. And vision should be big and vision should be futuristic but our approach is quite pragmatic instead of you know convincing all the people hey this digital asset is uh, you know currency of the future let's everybody use it right the, the people usually say okay i can't buy a cup of coffee with your coin right what, what's the point so that's why our approach is very pragmatic right instead of uh you know changing uh payment landscape overnight we do in step by step the first step is to take this new exciting digital world and integrate it into existing payment and banking infrastructure. And by doing that, we will you know, educate people, we'll show them the benefits, and we will push the adoption. That makes a lot of sense. Rather than pushing people, just a baby step, hey, just try a little bit of effort, get out of your comfort zone, and pursue up to mass adoption. That's a very cool thing. That's very, very cool. Hoping that these stable coins, are, can we already use these stable coins as of today or? We, we announced it uh, yesterday. We're planning to release them in two weeks. In so two weeks? Yeah. yeah. So it should be ready in, uh, for use in, in May. In May, wow, exciting times ahead. It is. You must be like, literally can't sleep every night. Or <laughs> I, well, I can't, I can't sleep, can't but sleep it's, very, it's very exciting, it's very exciting. <laughs> That's awesome. And especially for those who do, do not have a Wirex card, are there any specific zones for those who want to own a Wirex card that you can? This is a good point. So our card works everywhere where Visa accepted. So it's uh, more than 40 millions of merchants in more than 200 countries. So the cards right now are available only for customers from Europe. We launching our card product in Asia 
States and Canada by the end of the uh, second quarter this year. So it's quite interesting. Right now we have 700,000 on a waiting list in these regions. Wow. So yeah, it will be a very exciting year for us. So hopefully this card that I have in my hand will change the world of cryptocurrency and all of the institutional traditional people won't say that oh, it's called a currency, but I can't even buy my own coffee. They won't be able That's to say correct. that anymore. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So definitely for those in the right regions, get your Wirex card. It's an awesome card. This is one of the keys to mass adoption. I always thought that paying, being able to pay is a simple thing that we really need to achieve for mainstream people or maybe Wall Street or more people in the traditional banks, like you said, to start really accepting. Uh, digital, the new, this, the future of finance and the internet of money or value that you're talking I, I about. I totally agree with you. And um, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I don't think there will be one currency to rule them all. I don't think there will be one coin to rule them all. I do believe there will be a lot of currencies, cryptocurrencies, digital assets focusing on different use cases, right? And sometimes referred to token economy. But if you think about this, you know, you can tokenize whatever real asset exists, right? It can be fiat currency, it can be shares, it can be real estate, everything. So I do believe in near future we will see everything in some form or another on a blockchain, in a token economy. And, you know, everything we do will be in digital form. Mm, I, I look forward to that future. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, you were talking about earlier how the tangible thing is starting to disappear. In China, everyone uses WeChat, Alipay. Maybe in Japan, they're still heavy on cash, a bit yeah. old school. But uh, it makes sense. I mean, we use Wi-Fi. We can't touch Wi-Fi, but we trust Wi-Fi, right? So uh, everything should be digitized at one point. Um, you're a huge believer of Bitcoin. May I ask you, Pavel, what do you think about the SwissBorg Bitcoin app? <laughs> well, I, I used it a couple of times, actually. I, I do believe, you know, we touched this educational piece. I think, actually, the app is the excellent entry point for people who want to know more about cryptocurrency, who want to start trading or start experimenting with digital assets. I think it's just great. Awesome. So hopefully we can also introduce a stepping stone for those who are afraid to invest and just want maybe a simulation where you, you, can, you can actually earn BTC with zero risk, just having fun and being educated with the right terms. Pavel, we need you for mass adoption. Payments is really, to me, the most critical point. So we look forward to seeing you and following you. Where should we follow you, by the way? Are you more often on Twitter? On, on uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, so it's uh, MatvievP or just uh, Google Wirex and you will find my uh, Twitter account. So follow me on Twitter, I usually update uh, uh, post updates there and all the latest news. Awesome. Help us re reach mass adoption, my friend. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks again, dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe. We had an amazing guest once again. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and blast that bell notification so that you can access this awesome content by people who are really pushing the space and making our lives better. Thanks again, and tune in next time.